Hey gents, winter is here. Break out the turtlenecks and the big puffy jackets. Today I want to talk about why it is worth investing in your outerwear and my journey to getting there. So the question posed, is it worth spending $1,000 on a jacket? Not for everybody, but if you can, you should. So let's dive into why. First, a little bit about my outerwear and overall menswear journey is all of my jackets were whatever was on sale at TJ Maxx and Marshalls through the years, and they served me well enough, but you still hate the cold. What happens when you end up getting like a nice jacket, so then the first jacket I really bought myself was from H&M, it was probably 29 or $49, and it was a puffy jacket, but it didn't exactly keep me warm. I'm in Pittsburgh, which is in the Northeast, so it gets pretty chilly. It's not uh, Chicago, Minnesota weather, but it gets very cold, and you don't like going outside. Two years ago, I picked up what I would call my first serious piece of outerwear. It happened to be from Untuck It. It was about $500, and it had 3M thin slit waterproof insulation and it changed my perspective on outerwear entirely. So it went from being by whatever the cheapest that I could to holy cow, having a real piece of outerwear makes you not hate going outside and actually want to go outside. So once you have a jacket that is fully water resistant, has enough either down filling or some kind of insulation in there that keeps you really warm, you actually want to go outside and you enjoy it and you don't hate leaving the house for the winter, especially when you add in like this wild silk turtleneck or uh, the tech cashmere that I talked about from Mac Weldon. It's like, once you go down this road, it's a very good road to be going down. Now, that being said, not everybody can drop $1,000 on a Canada Goose jacket or $500 on a Untuck It jacket like this, or if you go to Marmot or Patagonia, they'll have options where you can get some kind of downfill jacket with an outer shell water resistance. And I think if you want like, a really nice, serious outerwear jacket, you are looking at about $500, which is where the Marmot and the Patagonia jacket sit. And then there's the patch that seems to be on half of New York City shoulders, which is this big Canada Goose jacket. And if you're like me, the first time you look up this jacket and it's $1,000, you think, holy cow, what a ripoff. And then you start to dig into it a little bit more and you see why it's priced this way and why people buy them because they are great jackets. And so if you're in the position of and wanting to invest in a piece of outerwear, which I absolutely think is worth it, you can buy a very nice jacket like this and it can last a decade. It is worth investing in. And so let's take a look at two options here. I have the Canada Goose Chateau Slim Parka and then I have the New American Trench down filled parka, and we'll talk about the differences between these two and why they sit at that about $1,000 price point. Look at this strap. This is like a serious strap to hang it on here. So Canada Goose is like the heritage jacket maker dating back to the late 50s in Canada. They actually IPO'd a few years ago as they were on this like really hot streak. They really hit a trend on these jackets, and I think it's like everybody waking up to the fact that, oh, you buy a nice jacket, it's exciting to go outside. There are definitely cheaper alternatives, and maybe I'll do a video on Canada Goose alternatives, but just talking through some of the details and the features on here, and then looking at also the American Trench one and why you're looking at these price points. So when you're looking for that investment piece, you're first looking for the outer shell. You want the outer shell to be completely water resistant resistant because it's going to keep you dry in rain or snow. And then the inner lining, which is what is going to keep you warm. On this jacket is a 650 power down fill. Now the, the number on that fill can give you a good indicator for one price, how expensive is it going to be, and two, how warm is it going to be. So 650 is pretty good. Looking at the American Trench here, it is 750. So slight increase from what I've read. You're at 900 is about the maximum that you're gonna end up getting in a jacket. So both of these are very high. The 900 downfill, power downfill, those are pretty much what you're gonna get you to Everest and, and extremely high things. So for these both being what I would consider city jackets, which is where almost everybody's going to be wearing these, you're looking really good. I even did a water test on both of these jackets where I was putting increasing amounts of water on these for extended periods of time to find the difference between these two because the other major difference and what really sets the American Trench apart, especially in price from the Canada Goose, is these will both keep you dry. What I found is that their water will eventually penetrate the Canada Goose after a certain amount of time, but the ripstop ventile on the American Trench jacket is truly amazing. I have one of their Ventile jackets. It's a spring 
uh, rain jacket and the Ventile fabric is a Swiss made fabric developed by the Royal British Air Force in Second World War and it is made to never get wet. It was made as a jumpsuit for pilots to go into freezing cold water and survive and that's the type of, type of technology that is used in this jacket and it's amazing. So the Ventile ripstop fabric on the American Trench jacket is probably the thing that sets us apart the most and then on the inside you have the downfill and then you have the inner lining and so that's why you see the price jump between these two but it's also why you see the premium over a jacket like the Marmot or the Patagonia jacket. The Canada Goose jacket of course made in Canada and then the American Trench all of their products are made in the USA to the standard of the Berry Act, which means that even components need to have a certain amount of USA componentry to them. And so you are getting a completely made in the USA product with the Swiss made Ventile fabric and the Italian zippers on there. And as I found over time, just because something is made in the USA doesn't mean that it's better made, but that is the mantra of Trench is that they only make it with the highest quality materials and the best stuff that they can find. And the down filling on both of these does have some humanity to both of them. So the American Trench one uses traceable down from Downlight, and that means that their entire supply chain is checked for humane activities through the process. And then Canada Goose also has their own down transparency standard that helps to make sure that you're getting good product within there and nothing that truly harms animals, which is something that I really like about Patagonia as well. They use a lot of recycled down and some of their own products that come back and they're made into new ones, which is very cool. What I was struck by the first time I put on the American Trench Jacket, the inner lining on the American Trench Jacket, uh, it's one of those things that when I put it on for the first time, I thought to myself, holy cow, what is going on here? It is so soft. It is a ripstop silk nylon peak and it's luxurious. The only way to describe this is luxurious. It's soft to the touch, but you can tell that it has some rigidity to it. It keeps you very warm, but I was also struck with both of these. So I've had both of these jackets for about three weeks. And so transitioning from outdoors to indoors, so whether you're walking around the streets, you go down in the subway where it can tend to be very hot when you're in New York, or if you're going into an office or into somewhere else, the way that they're able to adapt and adjust and not keep you overly heated, I think is one of the nice things about the inner linings that both of these jackets use. Plenty of pockets in the Canada Goose jacket, both on the outside and on the inside, zipper pocket on the inside, and then a nice kind of flannel lined pocket on the outside for your hands. And then on the American Trench jacket, also plenty of pocketry in, in there. On the inside you have one of the pull strings, which are military grade pull strings in order to slim the jacket down, make it hug your body and really get you a lot of tight. You can loosen it up if you're layering and you have a few pieces in there. On the outside, what's really interesting, it actually took me a full week to realize this is how the pockets worked. So you have the exterior flaps with the buttons on there, but then behind basically back on the side as you would with a normal pocket you can slide your hands into the pockets as well for easy to keep your hands warm those are flannel line too extremely comfortable and so it's a it took me a little bit to find that feature in there because i'm so used to having like the chest pockets like on a pea coat i have a lot of jackets that have the pockets up here but having them down there is nice and having them kind of hidden to not really take away from the rest of the jacket's aesthetics is very cool too and then let's talk about a little bit about the zipper mechanism on the front so with the canada goose you have a pretty hefty ykk plastic zipper and then on the american trench this is where you're seeing another bit of a premium touch to that jacket you have an italian made sza zipper which is metal and I, I'm really curious, I, I wonder the difference between the two, like is it better to have plastic in sub-freezing temperatures versus the metal? I've never found any of these metal zippers to fail on me at all. The plastic ones sometimes can get a little bit junked up. And both of the zippers, interestingly, the mechanism was on the left side of the zipper and it kind of broke my mental model of zipping a jacket because I'm, I'm right-handed, I'm so used to doing it on the right side. The, that first jacket I talked about that I wear almost every single day, right side. And so it takes a little bit of adjustment to get used to, but I really like the metal finish and the, and the metal zipper that is used on the American Trench. And then on the exterior, you have these big chunky buttons on the Canada Goose, which can make it pretty easy for zipping and buckling with gloves on. But the way that American Trench gets around that is they have a push button. So instead of on the Canada Goose, you have a standard like button hole and you push the button through the hole. And then on the American Trench, you have a push button, which you can push in and clasp, which I found easier uh, with the gloves. Small detail on there, but this, this whole channel is all about is comparing tiny details of products like this. And there's also just a tiny difference in the sleeve design on the Canada Goose versus the American Trench. So on the Canada Goose, the cuff comes up beyond the sleeve length 
of the jacket. And then on the American Trench, the cuff is better made cuff. I can feel a material difference uh, in, in a better quality cuff on there. But the way that it's made is it kind of sits underneath the sleeve, which I kind of like. So the ventile fabric comes up and around the cuff. Your hand is within there, but it's not it's not overly drastic. But then when you wear gloves, you do I feel like I do end up getting a better seal on the gloves. I always like to have my gloves under the cuff, seal it off, and I find that to be, even since a kid, I used to put my jackets that way. And to really wrap things up here, what's most striking between the two jackets is just how lightweight they are. So when you see a big puffy coat like this, you expect it to have some heft to it, but both of them are extremely lightweight. So you don't feel like you're wearing a big giant jacket. And I like the parka design that they come down, you know, about halfway to my knees. I like that the American Trench is a little bit longer. Uh, that's kind of what I want in the park. I want to be able to go down. I don't want to go to my knees or any lower, but I like that it's, you know, down below what would it, what you would get in like a Patagonia puffer jacket or something of like that. And the final price on both of these, the Canada Goose is $8.95 and the American Trench is $11.95. I think the, the difference you seeing there I talked about in the Ventile fabric, the zipper, the Made in the USA aspect, that's why you're getting a little bit more of a, of a higher price and, and some better made materials in the American Trench one. There are Canada Goose jackets that definitely push up into the $1,000 plus range, some of the fur lined ones. This isn't, you know, you will have more color and variable options in the Canada Goose one. The Parka, American Trench is a much smaller company. They have, I think they have four colors of this specific jacket and they have some other amazing outerwear. Like everything I've ever had from American Trench has been extremely impressive. And so I would take a look at that one. If Canada Goose you can get at like a Nordstrom or there's plenty of stores that carry those too. Because in menswear and just like watches, it's like there are these grail pieces, right? These pieces that you save up for that you can end up spending your money on and invest in those pieces. And that's always been my thing. Instead of buying a two or $300 jacket every two and three years, buy this $1,000 jacket that's gonna last you even longer than both of those. It will make you look better, it'll keep you warmer. It's just that the upside of investing and buying fewer things that are nicer uh, is just so much better than what we're used to in the fast fashion world. And that's the whole mantra of this channel. And so, hey, let me know what your favorite outerwear pieces are down in the comments. Are there certain brands that are flying under the radar that I should really look at? To me, that's American Trench. Uh, Canada Goose is very well known, but I'm always looking for more brands to highlight on here and bring you the best information that I can. Love to hear from you guys as always. You can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. And until next time, gents, stay warm. And this is the Cavalier. Turtleneck sweater.